All right. Hey, everybody. This is Frederick, founder and publisher of Saturday AM, the world's most diverse manga brand. And we are here with the world's toughest art tournament, March Art Madness 2021. This is the fourth round, folks. So we are actually coming to the end of this mighty tournament. And we're really pleased that we've got a great guest, as usual, of guest who will give us their thoughts and help us choose the participants who will move on to the final round, which will be next week. So today is really where it gets really, really tight because we're going to actually find some really great artists, some of the best artists in the entire tournament, and we have to make the tough decision to see who we think can move on to the next round. Now, that being said, you will constantly be reminded in this episode that you ultimately have a lot of sway over what happens to these artists. Maybe perhaps your favorite artist did a piece that you think is really exceptional and we didn't give it the votes necessary. Well, you have the opportunity to go in and change that by making your votes known. So feel free to go in and provide your votes for the people that you think should advance. Tell your friends, tell your families, but make sure that you do that after you watch this video. With that being said, welcome to March Art Madness 2021 round four review. If you guys don't know who we are, again, we are Saturday AM, the world's most diverse manga anthology. And Saturday branded manga have been around since 2013, leading the way for diversity and inclusion in the manga sphere. We love Japanese manga. We just simply want to see Japanese manga with more perspectives and more personalities being brought to it who are not necessarily from Japan, but from all over the world. And we've delivered with that with three incredible magazines. We have Saturday PM, which is our Sanin magazine dedicated to older male reader and content. We have Saturday Brunch, which is dedicated to Jose category, F uh, female creators, female artists, uh, LGBTQ characters, and, uh, and just an entirely diverse slate of content uh, that has a really perfect opportunity for everybody to get into it. But if you're looking specifically for content that features LGBTQ and or female protagonists, you will love Saturday Brunch. And of course, our flagship Saturday AM, which features some of the hottest characters and hottest content and creators from around the world, shonen oriented content, therefore the younger male demographic and female demographic, the most popular series you've seen, like Naruto Dragon Ball feature in Weekly Shonen Jump, and Saturday AM is kind of an analog to that with creators literally from all over the world, from Nigeria, Cyprus, the United States, France, and New Zealand, and so on. So definitely check out all three of these magazines. You can do that in our mobile app. Now, when you get our mobile app, you can actually download the latest issues for free. So the app is a free download. All the latest issues of our magazine are free, including the latest issue of Saturday AM, which you see right here, issue 132, which features, of course, Incredible content. The cover there you see is from newcomer Dan Tularshevek, who we actually discovered a few years ago. Uh, very young, talented artist out of Cyprus. The series Crunch Time is absolutely awesome, and you will definitely love checking it out. You can do that inside of our mobile app. We also have some amazing toys. So if you want to take the Saturday M action further, then invest in our collectible toys from Jabberwocky, brand new toy company with a lot of principals who had previously created content for the old um, uh, uh, Sky, Skylanders video game franchise. Uh, these are awesome folks. You can find them right now exclusively at Hot Topics, uh, at Hot Topic, which is an American retailer. Uh, simply go onto their website, hottopic.com, and they've got a great deal happening right now. You can buy two, get one free, so definitely check this out. We've got three of our most popular series, Bully Eater, Apple Black, and Massively Multiplayer World of Ghosts, and we have more announcements and toys coming soon. Likewise, if you want to see more physical oriented content from us, we do have a line of graphic novels, but we also have an upcoming physical magazine. Now, we've talked about this in the past. We're bringing this magazine out. We plan to bring it out late last year where it won the Pop Insider Best Geeky Gift of 2020. We're now trending towards uh, June to bring this out, maybe a little sooner, but we're really excited. This is going to be a, a uh, twice uh, yearly magazine. It's going to have all original content. And so uh, you definitely want to miss this. You can check out more information on our website. Again, if you want to get the most out of Saturday AM, start with the app. You can download the app, a very highly rated app, for free on the Apple App Store as well as the Google Play Store. 
It's called Saturday M Global Comics, and it has over 150 issues of diverse manga content exclusively created since 2013. You can't go wrong with it, folks. So go check it out. Saturday AM, Global Comics, available on iOS and Android. We also have a nifty web app, which you can enjoy as well, on our website. So to get more information, go to www.saturday-am.com forward slash app, A-P-P. To get more information about us, of course, we are everywhere. You can find great interviews with us and a variety of sites all around the web, from The Guardian and Anime Motivation to CBR and Anime News Network, Sci-Fi Wire, and so on. Neo Magazine, physical magazine, one of the largest English language anime and Japanese pop culture uh, publications out there, uh, has featured us routinely. And in fact, we're going to be in the next issue of Neo Magazine coming in April, and that will feature one of our special guests you're going to meet here in a moment. Our sponsors this year are pretty extraordinary. We've got a number of great uh, folks behind this year's tournament, beginning with Flick Solitaire. Folks, this is not your parents' solitaire game. This is gorgeous, vibrant, colorful, progressive, fast-paced, and you can play it on your Mac, your uh, iOS, and or Android device. Flick Solitaire is a fast-paced, awesome version of the solitaire game with multiple versions of solitaire that are out there including pyramid why get the standard static old conservative looking version of solitaire where you can get flick solitaire for free check it out on the ios and or android app store today all right folks this round is all about designing a manga cover and i want to introduce our special guest today who are going to help us determine who we think should go forward we're going to begin with Mitch Proctor, the creator of Henshin, a fantastic series involving uh, Sentai Warriors and Kaiju. It runs exclusively in our Saturday Brunch manga magazine. Mitch, how are you doing today? I'm doing good. How are you doing? I'm doing good, man. I'm doing good. Got a lot of stuff going on, but I'm doing very well. Mitch, uh, is your first time on one of these uh Review shows. Um, you are uh, you're British, as people can probably tell from your accent. I am. You, uh, which means that you're you're kind of a nice person. And I know, I know, I know. Eh, but yeah. I want you, I want you to to put on your 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 smarmiest, potentially Piers Morganist aspect. Oof. I know. I know. I, I was that was digging deep on that. I was like, oh, that's paper. I don't want to say that. Because <laughs> uh, you're going to have to be ruthless in this, Mitch. You're going to have to. It's going to be a really tough round. You have to be ruthless in this. But you should be good at this. You are not just a creator of Henshin. You also have a publishing entity of your own called Kaguchi Press. Can you talk to people a little bit about Henshin and a little bit about uh, Kaguchi Press? Like, what 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 are those, and um, and what do you do with that? Sure. Um, so yeah, uh, as uh, as Fred mentioned, Henshin is uh, my serialization in Saturday Brunch um, that follows um, Alex, who is a uh, a young gay man who finds himself in a world of kaiju and Sentai style heroes. Um, we are approaching a year of serialization with that um, the anniversary issue of brunch um in june um the most recent issue just came out in uh tail end of march um yeah and it's uh it's i like to think quite a fun series <laughs> <laughs> I think it's um, a fantastic series well thank you um and yeah there's a lot of i think really exciting things that will will be happening with that series um yeah and kaguchi press is my a uh, small press uh, publisher that I run over here in the UK. And we publish, um, you know, kind of small run uh, comics and art books, um, as well as being a uh, small press store featuring publishers and creators from kind of around the world. All right. And, uh, and so, <clears throat> folks, we'll uh, tell you more about uh, where to find more about all of our guests today on social media at the end of the broadcast. Uh, thank you, Mitch. Next up, we have 
uh, the lovely Fred Torniger. She is from Denmark. She is one of our fantastic creators behind a new series, also in Saturday Brunch, called Gunhild. She uh, is, uh, you may have seen her recently. She did a live chat with me, which did really well on our IGTV show, Instagram TV show called uh, uh, Pub Talk. Uh, Fred, how are you doing today? I'm doing swell, thank you. I'm very excited for next chapter of Gun Hill, and I'm working on it right now. Awesome. And tell people about Gun Hill. Well, Gun Hill is a Norse mythology manga about this little girl who's a Jotun, which is a type of nature creature which are hated by humans. Gun Hill has grown up amongst humans and is very unpopular. So she wants to turn her image around by becoming a god. And what's interesting about that is that, you know, what I love about Gunhild and what things so many people have, have, have enjoyed with Gunhild is that she is uh, rebellious, she's rambunctious, she's not your standard um, female character in manga. She's very strong willed, she's very powerful. Uh, but at the same time, you know, you still love her. Like, you know, she's not like the perfect little kid, you know, she's kind of like Naruto in the sense that, you know, you still love her, even though she is, uh, you know, not the best, uh, you know, a behavior. She's not the best behaved. Um, do you, uh, do you find that an interesting aspect of the character? Do you like that aspect of the character? Yeah. She's a bit of a, an anti-hero, really, which mm. I think is really cool. Um, and not something you see often. With, uh, with female characters, I feel. I agree. Agreed. Okay. All right. And then last but not least then is J.R. DeBard, uh, one half of the Laughing Twins. J.R., but today somehow by himself, um, a, a pox on the house of the other Laughing Twin. Uh, J, J.R., I mean, how you doing? Doing all right. <laughs> I tried not to laugh at night. Can't help myself. <laughs> I was gonna say, I know you were you were you were battling that. You were like, okay, I don't want to don't want to reveal this. What um, you are the creator of uh, Underground, which is one of our hit series inside of Saturday PM, of course, which is our Saini Manga Magazine. You, um, we met you. So, so everyone here is unique in the sense that you're all creators, uh, great creators within our Saturday Manga complex, and. Uh, Mitch is the only one who kind of we, we kind of met straight through. I think White had talked to him or met him, and then we kind of came in contact with him. Uh, Fred Torniger came through our system, Summer of Manga. You, we actually met at a convention. We met you directly. Um, tell, talk, tell everybody a little bit about your story in terms of, you know, how you got into manga creation and, and the kind of the connection you have to your series Underground. Uh, talk a little bit about that. Right. So, um yeah, we met at Anime NYC. Um, at the time, I was pitching a more of a shonen style comic. Um, and then as we talked, you know, I'd, I moved on to a uh, more sending approach, one that was more personal as well. Um, Underground is a martial arts series following a um, biracial, half black, half Korean um, Taekwondo practitioner mm -hmm. as, he, um, as he goes up the ranks of the uh, New York's underground fighting scene. Um, and I myself practice quite a few martial arts. I play a lot of martial arts games like Street Fighter, um, Tekken, um, a little bit of uh, King of Fighters. Um, and, you know, I, I'm just, I'm very into martial arts. So, you know, my series sort of builds on um, my own experience um, and my own lo love of the sport. And you can read it in Saturday PM. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Uh, and they're, they're, and, and, and of, of the three series that are being featured here, through you three uh, creators, uh, only Underground currently has uh, retro editions. So if you go in our app, folks, we actually have a setup where you can uh, check out the series from the very beginning. You don't have to go through individual issues. You can actually start from specific series from the beginning. And so this is a new uh, element of our brand and our business that we're building up. The retro packs are kind of like mini graphic novels. They collect maybe a couple of chapters at a time. Uh, and uh, I'm sure Gun Hill will be happening some point uh, within the summertime. Uh, Henshin should be happening very early summer. 
uh, or, or maybe, yeah, maybe very early summer. And so, uh, and, 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 you know, and then you'll see other, other series that we have. I myself write two of our series, Master Multiplayer World of Ghosts, which is dedicated to uh, Shonen Manga's first Indian American League characters, kind of like a mashup of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure and Yu-Gi-Oh! And I also write uh, Clock Striker, which is our most popular series outside of Apple Black and stars a black female lead character, the first in Shonen Manga history. And she is uh, determined to become kind of like this kind of for Star Wars. And you know, we have the Jedi uh, in this world. We have this thing called the Smiths, uh, which are like uh, super engineers and warriors. And Smith, blacksmiths back in the day had apprentices who learned from them uh, called strikers. So our series is called Clock Striker because she is uh, training under one of the only female Smiths like herself. Uh, named Philomena Clock, who is kind of a badass, looks like Mary Poppins, but is really, really, really uh, deadly. And Cass is trying to learn from her so that she can become a smith in her own right. And they go on adventures, and there's a subplot brewing. And so really great series. But again, uh, diverse content, uh, you know, is what we're all about here at Saturday AM. So I want to thank uh, our, our special uh, guest today, guest judges, uh, we also have, I also have some notes here from a guest who couldn't make it, who is Andrea Doni, one of my co-founders of Saturday AM. Uh, she's a creator of Saigami and a series called Kill Shot, which also runs the Saturday Brunch. She wasn't able to make it, but she did send me her thoughts, and I will address those uh, uh, as a guest uh, tonight uh, during this broadcast. So with that being said, let's, uh, let's get ready and get to it. As I indicated before, this round is all about manga covers. So uh, what we asked people to do was we gave them a specific manga magazine in Japan and said, hey, you can use any character in their history. Preferably uh, the, the main cover image should include a character who is from their, their background. Uh, and you can, you know, produce that and get it to us. And we will, uh, we will uh, run that uh, and I'll be part of the competition. And then we can choose, you know, which one is the best one. Uh, typically at this stage of the tournament, we start with 64 artists. They go mano a mano each week. We had some hiccups this year with people who uh, failed to get their work in on time, and so they were disqualified. So we, ended up with, we always had like a surplus of people. We never had an even number. So uh, this week is the last uneven number week we'll have, meaning that it should just be eight people in the fourth round, but instead it's 10 people. So we will work with these 10 and uh, we'll uh, get, you know, by end of day today, uh, in terms of the judging, we'll have our top four remaining. Uh, you all will continue voting until late tonight and then we'll have uh, the top four overall. And those will be the four who will compete next week and only one will be chosen winner. Only four will make it out of this tournament. So this is round four. There are 10 participants. We've matched them up either mano a mano or one person versus another person versus another person in the same matchup. So it's either two people or three people, but either way, only one emerges from each matchup. So with that being said, let's begin with our first team. Team Apple Black, which of course is our hit series from White Manga featuring a sorcerer, a, young, a, a world of sorcerers, and uh, our main hero, Sano, uh, has been blessed with this... Uh, arm that has the wand built into it and it's got immense power he can uh save the world as he uncovers conspiracies and so forth or he may be doomed to destroy it uh very 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 fun very action-packed and very gorgeous series one of the most popular independent mangas uh out there apple black by white manga uh this team of his has some great artists uh we're going to meet the final two right now and see who brought home the best artwork now, this group's challenge was Weekly Shonen Champion. If you don't know what Weekly Shonen Champion is, it's certainly not one of the bigger manga magazines. Those will be a little bit later. But it is a very popular and long-running manga magazine. It's been around since 1969. It was published by Akita Shoden. Uh, it features series you may have heard about recently, like B-Stars. You've probably seen Baki the Grappler also on Netflix. Yawamushi Pedal was a big series for them. It's been still running. had a major motion picture uh, in Japan a couple of years ago. Sha is one of their newest hit series. It's a female superhero who is not very confident. Uh, Worse is a big series they have as well. And then Welcome to Demon School of Runa-kun is really big for them. It uh, just recently celebrated its second anime season. 
Uh, that is the cover you see on the right. The kid with the kind of uh, spit curl and blue hair is Runicoon. And of course, the cover on the right has uh, Lugosi, the wolf character from B Star. So, this is Weekly Shonen Champion. What these uh, artists had to do was shoot, was create uh, artwork, uh, create their own cover that captured the essence of it with the characters from that magazine. Let's see what they had came up with. It's Oblivious 334 versus Katsugiri Art. Now, both these artists have done really well throughout the tournament. Uh, so, this is a really, this is a, Big show deck, only one of them can emerge. We start with Oblivious 334 here. And I want to go to, uh, I'm going to start, I believe, with uh, Fred Torniger on this one. Fred, what do you make of this? I really like the way the characters are stacked. I like how the, the smaller characters in front and the bigger is in the back. I think it's a bit text heavy. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah, uh, that's definitely. I think. I think the so the text surrounding the red mm -hmm. is a bit much. Aside from that, I think. I think the characters look really nice. Yeah, Blue's three three four has been a great artist throughout the entire tournament. Uh, I would agree. I mean, his his character work is, is really good and sublime. Uh, he he's clearly got massive talent. He's just paid. He won a tournament with us. Uh, I think a holiday tournament last year. So he's or the year before last. He's really talented. Uh, for me, this cover missed the mark. I think, like you said, I think the text heaviness just really destroyed the likability of this of this. Um, you know, uh, you know, a lot of these folks. I think we're going to see tonight tried to use Saturday AM as like a piece to work with this. And, uh, and uh, we didn't ask them to do that. So while I appreciate them matching Saturday M up with these series, I think, I think you know, the creators may have, what happens in, in, when you get this level is choices. I've said this before, it's all about choices. And I think the choice of some of the creators to try to involve Saturday M with this when we didn't ask them to, it just creates more, uh, more uh, just, just it creates more elements that don't need to be on there, right? Like at the end of the day, I just want the cover to be engaging. I want to see some cool character art, and I want to see some interesting articles. I'll give uh, Oblivious credit here. I like some of the articles he has mentioned here, uh, like me talking about anticipated manga adaptations and preview of Apple Black's new side story. Like I, I thought it was very clever how he tried to weave some of those things in, but all in all, I think it's too much text. I, I agree with you on that. And I, and I think, too, the, the character images are a bit just too random. Like It's like it's not the traditional manga covers – seem seem random but it's, it's more like organized chaos and this one just seems just very random characters popping up out of nowhere so um yeah so that's that's kind of my feeling on that uh his opponent katsugiri art had this piece this series you see here is called the, uh, the vampire dies at um the vampire dies in no time it's about to be an anime it's one of their popular gag manga type series uh it could be a next big thing uh, the artwork you see in the bottom right is by Popsule Fall. Uh, you're going to see our artists, some of our artists contributed a piece of art that they could use uh, for the cover if they thought it would help spruce it up a little bit. I really like what Katsugiri Art here did because she didn't know what artwork she was going to get. And so when she saw the poster image, she said, when she saw the image, I mean, she said, well, you know what, I'm, I want, instead of, since I didn't draw, since I drew the same character, I'll drop this in here and say it's all about a free poster. I thought that was very smart, very clever. Um, you know, I, I like this piece a lot, personally. This piece, to me, just, again, it worked. It was not text-heavy. The text is there, you know, works for the most part. Um, then I, the logo for the magazine is probably the part I like the least, just because it seems a bit too bland, and the 117 kind of robs it a little bit. But I, I did I did like this a lot. Just great artwork, good ingenuity. Uh, I thought this was a good piece. Uh, I'm going to go to uh, Mitch on this one. Mitch, what did you think? Uh, I would probably echo uh, what you said there. Um, I think this definitely has a better balance of text to image. Um, the yeah, the the hundred seventeen covering the the kind of the logo along the top um, is probably a bit of a no no, um, especially because part of the uh, the kind of that top corner of that particular character is mm. obscured. And I know that, uh, especially, you know, with manga covers, you only have to look at any of them and you can barely read the titles anyway. But um, that's usually with stuff, you know? Like, if, yeah. if something's obscured, it's with uh, 
promo or content or you know something that adds to the cover whereas the issue number you would expect to always be there so that covering the the logo probably a bit of a no-no but otherwise um yeah i think the balance is good um the artwork is obviously great um i like that it's a, a bit of an angle as well mm -hmm. um which is something you do often see with these kind of manga magazine covers you know sometimes they're always a little bit off off center off kilter just to kind of add a bit more visual interest and i think this does a great job of doing that okay yes i i would agree completely so this is gonna be a tough one uh i think both these artists are super talented and this it's only the two of them so one's going home one's continuing on to the final phase so uh so let's uh let's let's go on the list and see what we got here i've already given my answer i'm going with katsugiri art uh let's see jr debart which is it oblivious 334 or katsugiri art um i gotta go with uh katsugiri on this one okay is there any particular reason real quickly um yeah just in general the um in terms of composition um mm -hmm. and um the way re information is relayed i'd say that katsugiri's cover does it a bit better than uh oblivious agreed agreed and uh what about uh what about you fred torniger I'm going with uh, Katsugiri Katsu too. Okay. I think I, it, it just feels very a lot more balanced to me. Mm. And I really enjoy the colors, the way the purple, red, and yellow work together. I like that. I, I totally agree. I, 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 we, don't always, we don't always give proper credit to, to, to colors, but I think colors really pop on this one i mean this cover the color here totally you know totally i know what he's going for but it's like this just cap it's got mood it's just it feels unique it feels of a piece whoops sorry uh what do you make of this uh mitch katsugiri art or oblivious 334 i gotta go with katsugiri as well um for all the all the reasons list, list, uh, listed above all right so it looks like katsugiri art has the uh has the edge here um so you know um i will say that uh that uh, uh andrea doni creator of saigami and kill shot uh she's our guest number two as i've indicated she's actually uh throwing her support to oblivious 334 i'll tell you what she says here she says this reminds her of the physical american shonen jump covers which there's nothing wrong with that it feels a bit busy but in general good artworks and compelling design choices for her, this round goes to Oblivious. She felt with Katsugiri that the design was a bit amateurish, not not totally, but she felt just, it was a bit amateurish, and she felt that uh, some of the elements felt out of place, looking more like an app sticker instead of a current design choice. So, uh, so again, uh, Oblivious 334 did get uh, a vote. All the judges' votes are worth 25 points, so hats off to Oblivious 334 here. Now, that said, you can make the difference. You can make a huge difference, folks. If you wish to see Oblivious 334 uh, go through, or if you wish to see Katsugiri Art go through, simple, go vote. Go to www.saturday-am.com forward slash madness. Place your vote for who you believe should represent Team Apple Black in the final round. We wish good luck to all these creators, and we will go to our next team. But first, let's talk about Sketchwad. Folks, Sketch Wallet is a wallet. It's one of our sponsors this year. It's a wallet you can put, of course, in your pocket. I don't know where you would put a wallet, but it does have a cool thing to it. It's got an actual custom section where you can have both a pencil and a or pen, sorry, and a uh, 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 sketchbook. And this is really impressive, folks, because, again, you know, you've got uh, all sorts of technology packed in to the Sketch Wallet. I think a lot of people assume the Sketch Wallet is very basic. And, of course, it's meant to be pretty straightforward. But there's quite a lot of stuff packed in here. For one, these are canvas or leather. So you do have uh, an option of uh, quality uh, wallets that you can use and put into your uh, pocket. It'll hold your cash, your cards. It'll hold all of your information that you'd like to have in there comes in four four and a half by six uh it then comes with a short 2b drawing pencil so i'm sorry about that it was a pencil not a pen it comes with a page clip it comes with a one three and a half 
by five and a half blank white paper replaceable sketchbook with 60 pages of content. So you're able to actually get in there and have a fantastic uh, opportunity to create artwork, to be able to get your ideas out, or to use simply as a, uh, as a note scratch pad uh, for up to 60 pages. And this thing is absolutely sublime. You can throw it right in your pocket and never miss a beat. It also comes with RFID blocking cards, which help you prevent people from being able to steal your information from your chip cards, which is a new thing happening in a lot of big cities. So it comes with the RFID uh, card protection as well to prevent that from occurring. So you can't go wrong with a sketch wallet. It is part wallet, part sketchbook, 100% you. So please make sure that you, instead of getting yourself a uh, super expensive sketchbook, if you can't afford it, uh, feel free to get one of these sketchbooks, get a wallet and a sketchbook in one. You won't be sorry about this. It's really fantastic. It's sketching on the go, done the way that you want and having your, everything you need right there on you. Sketch Wallet, check it out. One of our proud sponsors of this year's March Art Madness Tournament. Team Bully Eater. This is a, a very, very busy group. They've got three participants in this round. So uh, this has been a really tough group to manage throughout the uh, course of the tournament. But uh, really strong group. Uh, Team Bully Eater is based, off, of course, the series Bully Eater by Raymond Brown. This is a series about a martial arts student who is determined to uh, take down people who uh, really just kind of uh, take advantage of the little guy, uh, bullies, except in his school, these bullies are super powered. So he has to take them down through uh, determination, willpower, and of course, incredible martial arts. So it's a really fun series, uh, has a great message to it, obviously, and uh, speaks to any fan of kind of old school manga. Uh, Bully Eater by Raymond Brown. This is Team Bully Eater. Let's get to the people here and see what they're doing. They're doing Weekly Shonen Jump. This is published by Shueisha since 1968. This, of course, is the number one shonen manga brand in Japan. You definitely know the series they've produced. My Hero Academia, Jujutsu Kaisen, One Piece, Naruto, Dragon Ball, Dr. Stone, Black Clover, Gintama, Bleach, Hunter Hunter. Folks, we could go on, Promise Neverland, and so forth. But right now... This is, gives you the gist of how significant Weekly Shonen Jump is to all of us who love Japanese manga. It's by far the biggest manga brand in the world. Uh, that's what these uh, team leader had to draw was create covers based on this. And we're going to get to these entries right now. Laura Katadwe versus Young Wavy, the artist, versus T-Rex and the painter. So with that said, let's get started here. We start with T-Rex and the painter. I'm going to go to J.R. DeBard on this one. J.R., what did you make? Um, yeah, no, it's um, it looks definitely like a um, magazine cover, which I think, you know, is something you really want to go for with these. Um, I, I like the incorporation of Sano. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and, you know, I, I think, you know, to to a degree like you know having a lot of information on there but still presented in a way um that you know i'm able to see what's going on and makes me want to actually open the magazine mm -hmm. um i think um uh, i'm sorry i lost my train of thought but uh no it's it's a, it's a really cool cover um one one thing i probably would do different um is just with the uh one piece and exclusive samurai uh ads at the top i probably would move those away from um the jump um logo just to mm -hmm. help compose things a little bit better um but i'd say overall a pretty decent job okay all right fred toyager young wavy the artist what do you make of this cover i think it's very cool i like again i like the colors in the main picture i think the white uh, the white background thing from the small ones looks a little bit um strange hmm. yeah yeah uh, yeah <laughs> yeah I'll, I'll it's give... not not much text uh, not much text in this one either which is okay. fine with me mm -hmm. but it does okay. look a little rough um, okay the elements outside of the main picture, I feel. 
I see. Okay. All right. Uh, last but not least, Mitch, you have this final one from Laura Katadway. Um, yeah, I think this one's quite interesting in that it's it's really rather different from all the others in the sense that there is no text on here um, really at all. Um, I get what they were going for with the uh, the kind of uh, group image that you see sometimes where you know all the artists will kind of collaborate and have all, they'll have all the series in one cover um, oh. or lots of the series in one cover. Um, but I think by not having any any text on there at all, it, it loses that magazine cover feeling. Mm -hmm. um, regardless of the execution of it, uh, of that text, you know, for better or worse, I think not having that is a bit of a bit of a loss, um, in my opinion. I think the artwork's great. Um, I think the rendering's really good. Um, I think the composition is mostly pretty good. Um, but yeah, I think I think not having the text on there is a bit of a bit of a minus for me. So yeah, so what I'll say is uh, I agree with what everyone said. I thought this is one of the toughest uh, ones to look at. Um, you know, I gave this to Lorca Tideway, but not by a huge margin. For me, you know, I just, I thought, yeah, I did think the character art here uh, popped really well. I liked seeing the diversity of characters. I, I thought the attempt of, of doing that was was, was nice. Um, the logos, yeah, are not quite as, I mean, like you said, this doesn't feel like a cover. This feels like, it feels like maybe a special edition. It doesn't feel necessarily like a cover. But I did feel like it did. It, I mean, it felt like it didn't feel like a traditional cover, but it did feel like a cover to like maybe a special edition version of it. Uh, again, the, a lot of things weren't nailed here, but the character uh, rendering, like you said, is, is really strong here. And I, and I really responded to that. Well, I, I love so the Young Wavy piece. I like this a lot. The challenge I had with it, because I love, you know, Young Wavy all all tournament long has proven that he he is uh, very, very strong when it comes to like dynamic character uh, interactions, you know, the problem of course for me is that again, like the design element here is just completely off. Like the, the, like these white bursts, like they just feel strange that like, there's no, like, you know, like they, they should have like a, uh, a, uh, they should have some, some sort of, uh, uh, you know, shadow to them or, or something just to give it a, a sense of uh, perspective and a, more of a design feel to it. They just feel kind of random. Um, uh, the My Academia uh, logo not being centered strikes me as a bit odd, too. Now, again, Lorca Tyway had similar issues. Why I said this is, for me, this was tough because all these guys to me were lacking in a lot of ways. But but this, you know, had some things I liked, has, had a lot of things I didn't like. Um, and then last but not least, Harrison the Painter. Uh, you know, I, I dug this one quite a bit. There's still some weird, like, things with the logos and fonts and stuff here. The only issue I had here is that I felt like the the character art, what I felt was significant in the Lorca Tawe piece, the character art was really strong. And this one, I think there's some things that don't quite add up with the character art, like the the Deku. I'm not quite sure from an anatomy standpoint if he works. Sano definitely looks strange to me. And when you see that, when you see these things that just look strange, it, it pulls you out immediately. Like when you're looking at a cover, especially with all the things on this cover, when something seems amiss, again, whether it's tilted text or too much text, it just immediately stops you from appreciating it. And that's what Timmy Lorcan's highway did well was he minimized the distractions and kept you focused on what he really is good at, which is the rendering. And so, you know, you could look at the rendering, you could be, you could be impressed with what you saw. There was, there was, and he, and he, he, he wisely limited the other things that would pull you out of it. Like, why is there a drop shadow here? Why is this logo crooked? Why, you know, why is this set up this way? Why, why is, why is there so much text here? Uh, but again, it was really tough. I think all these guys were really strong in what they did. All these had energy to them, and I think it was really, really straight. So I think this is going to be a toss-up here. And the folks, again, your, your vote's going to really matter on this one. So let's begin with uh, – uh, let's just stay with Mitch. Mitch, who, who did you choose? T-Rex and the Painter, Young Wavy the Artist, or Laura Katadwe? Um, I would have to give it to Young Wavy, personally. I think this particular cover balances the brief – which is making a magazine cover with, um, you know, some good artwork. Um, whereas I feel that while maybe the uh, Lord Katodway one artwork wise was maybe a little bit stronger, I think it didn't quite hit the brief for me. So this was the one that, uh, yeah, this is, I think this is the, the best uh, overall for me. 
Makes sense. All right. Jared the Bard, which one would you go with? Young Wave the Artist, Lorca Tadwe, or T Rex and the Painter? Yeah, no, I actually uh, agree with Mitch on this one. Um, I gave it to Young Wavy. Um, I thought his struck a good balance between like what the actual challenge was, which was you know to create a uh, magazine cover, um, which you know gives an idea of what's on the inside, mm -hmm. um, as well as um, pretty adept um, character rendering. All right, uh, Fred Torniger, Young Wavy the artist, Lorca Tadwe, or T Rex the painter. It's really close, but I'm going to go with T-Rex and the Painter. Even oh. though I think Lord Kotadwe has the best art, mm -hmm. I don't really mind that uh, T-Rex and the Painter's art doesn't look 100%. I think the overall look of the piece just gives me more shonen vibe together with the fact that there's uh, three characters sort of interacting and giving me a lot of good action. Okay, so uh, that's good to hear. So uh, so you're going with T-Rex and the Painter, and then I can tell you all that our guest, uh, Andrea Doni, creator of Killshot and Sagami, uh, I'm actually going to get with her because I'm not quite sure I understand what she says. She says uh, she – oh, okay, okay. So she's giving it to T-Rex and the Painter. She agrees with, uh, with Fred. She says, this one looks like a real Japanese cover when it comes to design. The artwork is dynamic. It fits the theme of the round well. Clever font choice, design placement. If we're judging based on the coherent design, this round for me goes to T-Rex and the Painter. Uh, she said Lorca Todway's uh, uh, composition is excellent. Uh, she says, uh, says that, but it feels more like a, like, a, uh, like a promotional image rather than a cover. And for Young Wavy, she said it's very dynamic artwork. Uh, feels like it could be a real jump cover. The rest of the design, however, feels sloppy in comparison. Feels more of a fan-made than professional-looking category. So... She really liked it, but she felt like it fell down a bit with some of the some of the, the, the elements of it just seemed kind of amateurish and other parts of it. So uh, okay, so uh, folks, it's looking like right now this is gonna be a split one, just like we suspected. So Young Wavy has some votes, Lorca Tabe had some votes, and Jurek and the Painter had some votes. Who are you gonna vote for, folks? Let us know by going to www.saturday-am.com forward slash madness. Hit the link to vote. Make sure you fill the information out completely and make your vote known. Who do you think should emerge from Team Believer? Who will represent Team Believer? Young Wavy the Artist, Lorca Todway, or T-Rex and the Painter? You can make a big difference here, folks, by voting. So please make sure you go and vote as soon as you finish this video. Next up, let's talk about Wacom. Wacom is the largest, the biggest, the most respected, the most heavily uh, uh, most well-respected quality and, and reviewed uh, drawing tablet in the markets uh, for artists. Uh, Wacom is a Japanese company. They uh, make, of course, some of the best drawing tablets for your PC, Mac, and or Android device. Like a lot of people don't know about this, but it does work as well with Android uh, slated computers. Um, you uh, just have an absolutely excellent response to the pen and screen you're able to really create the artwork as well as obviously the software to uh, work with it to create professional grade comics. So uh, every artist that I know, every serious artist I know has used a drawing tablet uh, and many of course rate Wacom at the very top. So uh, we're very honored to have a chance to work with three of the biggest Japanese manga uh, art supply companies, uh, including Sakura and Clip Studio Paint, and Wacom, of course, is something we're really proud of. Winners of this tournament will be receiving a Wacom uh, One tablet, so it's a really big deal. We could not be more excited about that, and we hope that you will check out Wacom for your drawing needs. If you're looking to get into art, if you're looking to uh, make your artwork more professional, then please check out the name brand in the drawing market tablet, and that is our drawing tablet market, and that is Wacom. Uh, you can find out more information uh, by Googling Wacom, W-A-C-O-M, and going to their website. All right, folks. Uh, next up, we have Team Clock Striker. If you guys don't know what Clock Striker is, it's Shonen Manga's first black female lead character. As I said earlier, she is on a quest to become a smith. These are warriors who are part engineers, part warriors, all awesome and cast. Our lead character wants to be that. She's fortunate to find one of the few female Smiths in the history to be her, her mentor. 
named Philomena Clock, and that's how we get Clock Striker. Striker is a term for a uh, apprentice. And this is a really action-packed, awesome series with illustrations by French artist Asaka Galadima. Uh, this is another really difficult group with three artists participating, so it's going to be a tough one. We have these guys drawing Weekly Shonen Magazine. Now, Weekly Shonen Magazine is one of the biggest competitors to Weekly Shonen Jump. Uh, chances are, if you've not, uh, if you love manga or anime, but you don't really keep track of who's who, you obviously have seen a lot of the Shonen Jump stuff. But chances are you don't realize how much of the stuff you enjoy is actually Weekly Shonen Magazine. They give Shonen Jump the biggest run for their money in Japan. Uh, here's some of the titles. Fire Force, Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse, Shangri-La Frontier, Eden Zero, Tokyo Revengers, Fairy Tale. I could go on and on and on. They've got a history of extraordinary titles that you've probably seen. Uh, they also do publish Kadansha, the publisher of this, since 1959. Also publishes Bosatsu Shonen Magazine, which includes Attack on Titan. So Kadansha is no small fraud when it comes to manga, uh, globally popular manga around the world. And this is a big assignment for these artists. Let's see what they come up with. We have DKMB Studio versus Tokyo McFly versus Miserable Monk. So right here, we've got an artist from the Philippines, South Africa, and the United States. So it's going to be a tough one. Let's get to it. First up, Tokyo McFly. Uh, I'm going to go to Fred Tornadro on this one. Fred, what did you make of this cover? I respect the fact that they're trying to keep it very simple. I don't like the purple background. Um, that part is very amateurish to me. Mm. I like, I, I enjoy the idea of these two characters. I like the way the blonde haired one is drawn i don't like the way the main character is drawn it's a bit static and personally i would have liked to see a bit more interaction between the two since it's all about this duo yeah i definitely get where you're going with with that um this is uh you know fire force is one of the most popular scenes. in fact we're going to see it i think in every cover version that these kids did but uh or young people did but yeah it's 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 definitely uh scaled down there's no question about that took fly didn't try a lot that's why i didn't give it a high rating on this i think the character art for it is pretty decent um you know i did like the fact that he did try to keep it low low key uh even the little icon which was drawn by mitch proctor at the bottom uh, with uh, Blue Lock, which is one of their one of their newest hit series, you like you know he just left it in a white box. Like that's just you know if you guys know me when it comes to design, like that's something that just that just kills me. I'm like you know it was a transparent PNG, you could have placed it anywhere. Putting it on a white box like that, or or not taking if the white was on it, not taking the white off and really inserting it so that you can get more of the you don't have to break up the symmetry of the piece. Just kind of. It just didn't work for me, but uh, that's Tokyo McFly. Uh, Mitch, what did you make of DKMB Studio? Um, I really liked this one. Um, it's definitely busy. Um, I don't think there's any any two ways about that. There's a lot of text on this, um, and depending on your kind of personal preference, that, that might be a good thing, might be a bad thing. Mm -hmm. um, but I think there's definitely a, an effort from a design point of view to make this feel like a cover um, with the, uh, the usage of logos, usage of text, um, and the kind of the, the bubbles as well for uh, the content in the issue. Um, and I think the composition of the artwork is really good as well and mostly lends itself to the way they have designed it and the way they've arranged the rest of the content. I would, the one kind of bottom right Mm -hmm. um, there's the the green text um, that's covering a character's face there. Um, that's probably the only thing I'd, I'd probably criticize from that point of view. Um, but I think there's definitely been an effort to, again, make it look like a cover with some great artwork. And um, I think I think they've probably set out what they've achieved what they set out to achieve, I would say. Yeah, I mean, uh, look, I mean, as I said before, as I said last time, like this is, we have these three, it's really tough. Cause I think all these artists are really great. Uh, DKMB Studio has been just slinging it the entire tournament. Uh, from a design standpoint, I hate all the text on this, and I hate the font. I really hate the font on this. Yeah, it I'm was not a huge fan of the font either. Yeah, exactly. I'm a font guy. And I, 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 I was, de I was going to not vote for this. I, I, I gave it ultimately for really three reasons. One, you know, again, it's meant to feel like a magazine. It does feel like a magazine cover. Two, 
the rendering of the characters is really, really solid. Not just solid, but the fact that they actually render the characters in the style of the artist. That's something that a lot of artists either weren't able to do just from a talent perspective uh, or, 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 re or time to research and figure out how to create the imagery similar to the artist. But I thought this artist really nailed, there's at least four, four or five different art styles here, including Mashima. And I thought he, he got very close to each of them and I thought in a really unique way. And then I just love the fact that he then just threw in elements that really, you know, really cemented the magazine piece of it by having different content pieces. Because these magazines do have other content. They do have interviews. A lot of times they'll interview uh, female models and so forth. So uh, he didn't add that here. But the fact that there are articles uh, of some of the, the personalities around manga and anime, I thought was was just uh, so that's kind of what got me on it. Uh, last we have Miserable Monk from South Africa. Uh, I'll just say I think she's an awesome artist. Uh, I you know for me this piece though just missed the mark. Uh, it's uh, a bit too uh, stylized. So I, I don't get a chance to really see the the style of the artist and these characters. Which when you're talking creator owned content, you, you have to kind of get close to that. Uh, and then likewise, there's a lot of stuff happening here. That's for me. Uh, I love the call out for clocks record, of course, but still, I just, I just felt like this artist is capable of doing so much. And I thought this choice here, while interesting, just kind of missed the mark of giving me that sense of a Japanese manga magazine. That said, uh, super talented artist, though. Uh, what did you make of this piece, JR? Um, yeah, no, there, there's some parts that I, I honestly disagree with. I think the, the fact that they were able to render so many characters um, so well, even if it was different from, you know, the uh, original creator styles mm -hmm. um, shows a, a um, pretty, pretty high level of um, artistic capability. Um, there, there's certain small things like the rim lights on the characters um, from Shinra's flame um, that, you know, just haven't been attempted with the other pieces we've seen so far. Mm -hmm. Um, the the downsides I see um, something we've been seeing a lot in terms of like text um, that could be a bit stronger. You know, you have flaming issue on the right, but it's really hard to see with all the actual art there. Mm -hmm. um, as well, there just isn't too much going on to make it feel like an actual magazine cover. But I'd say that the the piece that centers everything is still really strong. Mm. Okay. Well, then we've got a choice to make then, folks. Uh, I've given my answer. I'm going with uh, DKMB Studio, but let me go down the list then. Mitch, who are you going for? Tokyo McFly, DKMB Studio, or Miserable Monk? Um, I went back and forth a lot. Um, it took me a while to decide, but ultimately I'm going to give it to DKMB. DKMB Studios from Mitch, all right. Uh, Jared DeBard, DKMB Studio, Miserable Monk, or Tokyo McFly? Yeah, no, I, I was also super torn. Um, I gave it to DKMB, um, but I, I thought the art in general this round was pretty well done. Excellent. Okay. Uh, Fred Torninger, DKMB Studio, Miserable Monk, or Tokyo McFly? I'm giving it to DKMB Studio. It's DK the cover I feel excites me the most, and yeah. it's most, most magazine-like. I agree. This guy was my uh, take as well. Uh, I will say that our special guest, Andrea Doni, creator of Saigami and Killshot, uh, pretty much agrees. She says, probably my favorite artwork this round was DKMB Studio. Love the composition and vibe. It really fits the magazine's lineup. I love the font choice, too. D disagree with her on that. Uh, overall, great cover with smart ideas and great execution. She did give some warm words to Miserable Monk. Said this cover looks fun. I uh, felt that uh, really vibrant artwork, but at the end of the day, cover just feels a bit too neglected. Uh, artwork's making up for it, though. And took him a fly. She felt that the lack of design really hurt the piece, despite the fact that she really likes uh, the artwork and thought it was okay. So, uh, so yeah, it looks like DKB Studio, folks, is really leading with this. But, again, you can make the difference, folks. If you want to see Tokyo McFly, uh, get through, vote. If you want to see Miserable Monk, get through, vote. Otherwise, DKB Studios right now definitely has an edge amongst these judges today. So please make your voice known. Tell your friends, tell your family, tell your loved ones to go vote. Go to www.saturday-am.com forward slash madness and place your vote today. It'll be ending at 11.59 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, folks. So that's plenty of time for you to get home, eat, watch a little TV, and still vote. Make sure you vote tonight. 
All right, folks. One of the uh, other sponsors we have is Just Sketch Me. This is a 3D character pose tool. So, folks, when you're making comics, you're making artwork, character matters. You know this. So building character really, really matters as well. You want to build characters that don't, as you've seen today so far in the broadcast, you don't want to create artwork where things distract you, take you out of it, whether it's a character who's arm is weirdly shaped or doesn't quite look the right direction for running or for jumping or, or, or throwing a punch, what have you. So you want to have things you can look at for reference. You want to build great reference material. Obviously, you don't want to always look at your favorite creators because you can then you know, subconsciously start to adapt that creator style to yours. So the folks, that's why people use models. They can either use action figure models or dolls, posing dolls. They can use uh, a software like Clip Studio Paint, which has some of the stuff embedded in. But for a truly powerful 3D character pose model tool, you want to use Just Sketch Me. Not only is this thing super affordable, but it offers literally tons of options for you to look at, including really, really sophisticated hand posing, 3D character hand pose. If you want to get the proper way for the hand to look, for the fingers and digits, for the, the arc of the arm to, to, or hand to, to fit, it really does a really great job with that. But you get tons of opportunities to layer in different imagery, different uh, perspectives uh, from different types of character shapes, different types of character models. Uh, you can have several character models together so you can get a whole range of uh, possibilities of posing different characters in relationship to each other. You don't want to go wrong with this, folks. You can try it for free. Simply go to www.justsketch.me and you will get all the information you need to take part in what is a really fantastic and specifically tailored around 3D character posing software. They do have an app coming soon, so please stay tuned for that. But this is a web-based experience, so you don't need anything. You can even do it on your phone, but check them out now. Just sketch me. All right, folks, our final team is Team Hammer. Who's going to represent Team Hammer? If you don't know Hammer, it's by the great Jay Odin, one half of the Laughing Twins. We have J.R. DeBard here to back me up on that. J.R., uh, does Jay Odin laugh a lot? <laughs> I don't think as much as I do. <laughs> there you go, folks. Uh, you, can take it from J you can take it from J.R. because he's not just a laughing member. He's the president. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Hammer is a fun, action-packed uh, story about a young boy who is searching for his father. He finds his father's journal, and when he begins investigating the journal for clues where his dad went, he realizes he can actually teleport to places that he in the from the journal that his father has been to. So he gets wrapped up in these really huge uh, fantasy worlds and lands and re really weird characters. And uh, it's very dangerous, very adventurous, but of course... We root for this guy because Stud has a power. He can turn his hands into hammers. So this is a really fun series for anyone who loves big, broad adventure titles like One Piece. You will love Hammer, and you'll love the artwork of Jay Odin. Team Hammer was focused on Weekly Shonen Sunday. That was their assignment. Weekly Shonen Sunday is one of the oldest manga publications as well, published by Shoga Kukan since 1969. This is easily the third most popular manga magazine in Japan. So we started with Weekly Shonen Champion, which has been around for a very long time. But Weekly Shonen Sunday is easily the third most popular. Why? Because of one Rumiko Takahashi, the literal goddess of manga in Japan, has created more hit series than just about any creator in the country. She had, we, have, we have her to thank for Urasai Yasura, a.k.a. Lum, for Mason Okoku, for Ron Mahaf, for Inu Yasha, for Rene, for Mao, and a host of great titles. Uh, not to mention they have one of the other longest-running manga of all time outside of One Piece, and that is Detective Conan. So Weekly Shonen Sunday Magazine is in third place. They're not the second place series. That is Weekly Shonen manga Magazine but they are not to be trifled with. They have extraordinary content. You've seen their content over the years. The big series right now, Detective Conan, they have a new hit series called Free Run, Beyond Journey's End. Mal, Major the Second, a big baseball series. Comey Can't Communicate. And of course, the granddaddy Inuyasha. Uh, this was a tough assignment. These are some really popular characters. We have just two artists in this round. Let's we'll see how they do. Jacob S.M. Art versus Sir Doom. That being said, let's get to it. Sir Dune, I'm going to go directly to Fred Torniger. Fred, what'd you make of Sir Dune? I really love this cover. The way it's just very stylist stylistic to me. 
with the with the colors and the character. That's basically another thing I don't love about this. Okay. Yep, I, I I agree. This is what caught me. I love the pattern. I love the design uh, orientation of it. It's a little different, but the Japanese then helps you kind of settle right in. They threw in Inuyasha, which was done by Tony Dawkins, one of our artists from Saturday AM, the series called Titan King. So really, really solid uh, piece of content. Uh, I think it's just a great piece overall. I really did enjoy it. This is what swayed for me. There's another reason why the other piece didn't, and we'll talk about that in a moment. But uh, let's go for Jacob SM Art. Let's go to Mitch Proctor. Mitch, what did you make of this piece? Uh, I was really torn on this because um, I think the artwork on this one is pretty good. Um, but the the kind of the big issue, and I, I assume it's what you were referring, alluding to a moment ago, is the brief, it's, it's just, it's the wrong magazine. That's right. That's right. <laughs> well, well, so, I, you know, so the, the top uh, is potentially uh, uh, Freerin. I'm not mm-hmm. sure. That might be Freerin. But regardless, to your point, uh, you know, uh, whoops, sorry. Uh, everything else is wrong. Like the logo is wrong. Uh, I mean, just this person just literally paid zero attention to the rules. Mm-hmm. We, have, uh, we have Jackie Rindy, who's uh, obviously here with us today and does an excellent job of managing uh, March Art Madness. No way in the world this artist, uh, as I talk about a, a lot, comprehension is everything. And, and some of these, sometimes the artists, they get so excited to just draw, they don't pay attention to the rules. I don't know how this artist missed that, but I, it's certainly not because of the information not being there. So yeah, I mean, for me, this is a definite fail. Like, there's just no way around that. I just don't, you know, I like the artwork as well. It's not perfect, uh, like, you know, uh, What's his name? The character's name Senku from uh, Doctor Stone. Like, yeah, it looks a little strange the way he's posed and so forth. Uh, Luffy, I think, looks great. And, of course, if that's free run at the top, that looks fantastic. But regardless, there's a lot of things here that don't quite uh, – that, that are strong but not perfect. And then to then just throw it away by not actually following the rules is just kind of a – just a immediate, you know, failure for me. But um, but for you, you uh, – anything else you liked about it? Um, I think actually from a kind of like if again this is why I was kind of torn and kind of disappointed because I think from a kind of design point of view the the overall layout and attempt to make it look like a magazine cover I think is generally pretty good Um, I think the usage of the series logos and the placement and stuff is generally not bad Um, you know I think one of the issues with a lot of these is that a lot of things are fighting for attention and I know that uh, Japanese design and particularly manga magazine covers are definitely, um, uh, let's say, maximalist. Um, but I think this does a good job of kind of balancing it and showing off the artwork, which is the kind of the main point, um, while still having those elements, which is what makes it so frustrating and disappointing that they just didn't read the brief properly and uh, included the wrong yeah. content. Okay. All right. Well, let's uh, let's let's get to it then, folks. Time to vote. So, uh, start with uh, Jerry DeBar, Jr. Sir Dune or Jacob S. M. Art. Uh, yeah, I got to go with Sir Dune. Uh, I mean, obviously, he they did the challenge. Um, I also thought that uh, just you know throwing this out there, I think that this one was the one that looked most like a magazine cover to me. Agreed. Agreed. Um, totally. Yeah. Yeah. Um, super bummer <laughs> about the other one. Uh, especially since I just noticed that the JoJo anime did in fact get confirmed like a few hours ago. So that's like super hype, but oh, that's true. <laughs> it didn't meet the challenge. So um, for me, it's Sir Dune. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, Fred Torniger, Sir Dune or Jacob SMR? Sir Dune. I think even if the, the other one hadn't been the wrong magazine, I just think Sir Dune has, has my favorite piece. I agree. Mitch, Sir Dune, or Jacob S. M. Mort? Yeah, uh, Sir Dune. Um, and again, I think to kind of echo what everyone else said, I think the composition of this and the overall kind of layout was really good, really strong. And the thing is, I think something worth mentioning as well, that the, the illustration here is mostly black and white with just a purple fill and some screen tone. Mm. But because there was an attempt with the rest of the design to tie that in with 
the kind of flat color and the screen tone or half tone pattern, it all feels cohesive. And I think that's what makes it feel more like a magazine cover. You know, it doesn't necessarily have to be like the most uh, well rendered art. It just yeah. has to all feel cohesive. And I think that's what this this particular one really, really nails. So that's, totally. that's definitely what did it for me. I totally agree 1000%. I think Sardoon hit it out the park on all levels, including using the art that we sent to them, which is a bonus from Tony Dawkins that was not used for Jacob SM Arts uh, cover. So yeah, I, I couldn't agree more. Uh, Andrea Doni uh, just indicated that she also agrees. Uh, loves the minimalistic and compelling design of Sir Dune. It's clean, straightforward, and efficient. Great ad placement for the art wallet at the bottom. I'm not sure if you need to add at the bottom, but yeah. Uh, she felt the round goes to Sir Dune easily with uh, Jacob SM Arts. She did the same thing, you know, Sona Sunny Magazine. That's not the cover for it. So um, she, you know, she, she did love the color choices, love the magenta and blue elements showing up, but not following the instructions is a bit of lackluster and she can't give it uh, for that reason. And I totally agree. So folks, again, you can choose who wins this round. This was a tough one and you can choose by simply going and voting. All of the surveys are the same. So if you click any of the group surveys, you will be asked to answer all of the matchups from all of the teams. So take this opportunity to have a chance to weigh in on all the teams seriously and simply look at the art, give your thoughts across the 10 artists being featured today and choose who you believe the top four will be from the each one emerging from the individual teams, Team Apple Black, Team Bull Eater, Team Clock Striker, and Team Hammer. Go to www.saturday-am.com forward slash madness. All right, folks, I want to tell you guys one last thing. We are so thankful to be working with Clip Studio Paint again. We've worked with them for a number of months now, or roughly over a year. Uh, they, of course, are the biggest software team to get dedicated to creating uh, manga content, including even animation. You can even make animation in this app. Uh, there are two versions. Uh, if you get the EX version, of course, it allows you to uh, have a chance to create content uh, and publish it. Uh, from the app. You can uh, take it and actually make it print ready. So uh, so this is a fantastic app. Every serious creator uses a software to build their comics. Uh, and Clip Studio Paint has long been one of the top ones, both in Japan and here in the West, whether it's Europe or uh, America. Uh, you can certainly check it out. They have offered free trials of up to three months for the software. We highly recommend you check it out. Clip Studio Paint, definitely perfect for manga and definitely something used by many of the creators of Saturday AM. We thank them for being a sponsor of March Art Madness 2021. All right, folks, again, that's it for me. I'm Frederick, founder and publisher of Saturday AM, the world's most diverse manga anthology. Yes, we're moving a little quick today, folks, because we wanted to get this thing wrapped up quickly so you guys can get on with your Easter Sunday and get on with voting for your favorite artist. You're going to need time to look at the art, think about it, make your choice, but make sure you get it done before 11.59 p.m. tonight. Pacific Standard Time. That's California time for those of you who don't know your time zones. Uh, with that being said, let me go real quickly around the horn. Uh, Mitch, any final words? I would just say really strong showing um, this round as with all the rounds um, and best of luck to everyone. Excellent. Fred Torniger, any final words? Major props to every artist. I think everyone has done a great job in their own way. Awesome. And uh, Jerry DeBard, uh, laugh and then tell me any thoughts you have. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I just want to just want to echo what everyone's been saying. Uh, all the artists did a great job. Uh, congratulations to everyone who got this far and congratulations to the people who move on. Uh, yeah, <laughs> that's it from me. <laughs> all right. So, folks, if you want to see more from uh, Jerry DeBard, uh, the creator of Underground, please download our app at www.saturday-am.com forward slash APP. Uh, his series Underground is fantastic. It runs inside of issue of the Saturday. Uh, uh, it runs inside of issue of the Saturday. Uh, uh, I didn't get that. Could so, sorry. I don't know why uh, Siri was asking me questions. But anyways, it runs inside of issues of uh, Saturday PM, and you can get all of that for free in our app. You can also follow Jared Bard at his uh, Instagram, which is uh, drama manga. That's J R A M A manga, M A N G A, all one word. Check him out there. Fred Torniger, of course, we really appreciate her being here. She's a creator of Gunhild. You don't want to miss that. It's a great series inside of Saturday brunch. You can get that 
via our app. So make sure you download our app again at www.saturday-am.com forward slash APP. Gun Hill will be featured inside of issue of Saturday Brunch. All of these issues for free. Issue three is out right now. And the case of uh, Fred Torniger, her Instagram handle is Fred underscore Torniger, T-O-R-N-A-G-E-R. So please make sure you check out her uh, Instagram and give her a follow. And last but not least, we have Mitch Proctor, the creator of Hinchin, big series inside of Saturday Brunch as well. Again, download the app. You can check it out from there inside of issue of Saturday Brunch. Latest issue was issue number three. And Mitch's uh, profile, Mitch, is it I am Bon Idol? Is that the one? That is. So check him out at at, at I am A M Bon B O N Idol I D L E. Why he's named that, I have the slightest damn idea. But that is his Instagram, ladies and gentlemen. I am Bon Idol. Is that a character or something, Mitch? Uh, my parents always used to say I was Bone Idol, uh, which is a saying in the, in this part of the world for being lazy. So I uh, I just went with it. I like that. Okay. Well, there you go. Folks. <laughs> very, very special mention. He's not lazy. I know that because he worked really hard then uh, for, for AM. Folks, thank you so much. Again, sorry to be rushing this through, but we really want to get done with this. Everyone can enjoy the rest of their weekend and give you guys time to enjoy uh, things you're going to do and then to make sure you get back to our site and vote. Go to www.saturday-am.com forward slash madness. We'll be announcing the winners tomorrow, which is April 5th, 2021, on our website. And the final round content will be revealed tomorrow. The final four will be revealed. And the episode next week of our live review show will be for all the marbles, folks. And what are the surprises? Really simple. They're going to get a tablet. They're going to get a professional art contract with video game company Flick Solitaire. They're going to get $650 worth of physical art supplies and more. So, folks, you don't want to miss this. We've also got a special couple of announcements we'll be making next week as well. So make sure you tune in for our live review show for our final round of March Art Madness 2021, the world's toughest art tournament from the world's most diverse manga brand. Stay safe, folks. Please continue to social distance, wear your mask. And if you have a chance to get your shot, please do so. I got mine. It hurts like the Dickens, but you'll be better for it. Take care, everybody. Thank you so much. And we will see you guys next week. Take care.